بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى مخانما اللهم صل على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الله وأكرمني بنور الله اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان عونك برحمتك يا رحمة الرحيم After finishing this series on Imam and Bilaya I have been thinking and consulting about what would be very beneficial and suitable book to choose for next series and after considering many options and many topics so I thought it would be perhaps uh, very uh, suitable choice for us to start reviewing a very informative very well written book on akhlaq by the late Imam Khomeini and that is 40 hadith or in Arabic 40 hadith and in Farsi Chahil hadith of course this is uh, a selection of 40 hadith with uh, detailed commentary by Imam Khomeini What makes it uh, also maybe more relevant is that we are approaching uh, the demise anniversary of Imam Khomeini in the next few days. So that would be also uh, adding to the uh, significance of working on this. Uh, but the main thing is the content of the book. Imam Khomeini in his introduction to the book he says that he wanted to follow a tradition of ulama a kind of practice which has been common among ulama for centuries and that is to choose 40 hadith and make it available for people so that they can benefit from these 40 hadith in the course of history many ulama Sunni and Shia have done this either they have selected 40 hadith from different fields of Islam different aspects of life or sometimes they have focused Forty hadith about particular issue. For example, forty hadith about family, forty hadith about youth, for example. And the reason for this common practice among Sunni and Shia scholars is the hadith that has been narrated by Sunni and Shia narrators from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam and this hadith is very well documented and even some ulama have said maybe we can say this hadith is mutawatir mutawatir means it has been so many times narrated in generation by generation that leaves no chance of thinking that this might be uh, not authentic uh, for example in the Shia sources we have this hadith narrated by Shaykh al-Sadur rahmatullah from Imam Qadim from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
Allah Majlisi in Biharul Anwar says that this hadith is mashhur and mustafid means has been very commonly narrated rather it has been said that it is mutawatir so it's very famous hadith what is the hadith the hadith is this man hafidha maybe in some versions there are differences in wording but the general idea is the same man hafidha ala ummati arba'ina haditha ينتفعون بها بعثه الله يوم القيامة فقيها عالما whoever memorizes for my ummah 40 hadith that they would benefit from they would benefit from this hadith on the day of judgment Allah would resurrect him as a learned person as a person who has deep understanding of religion either in the sense of jurist or in its uh, literal sense means someone who has deep understanding فقه الرجل means he has understood very well يتفقه في الدين that we have also in Surah Tawbah so basically the idea is that if you manage to register to memorize or maybe perhaps have in the sense of safeguarding and registering and keeping it available 40 hadiths that people can benefit from them in their lives it's not just something that has uh, scientific value something which has practical value they can apply it in their lives then because of this effort you will be resurrected as an alim and perhaps this shows in my humble understanding that these hadiths should not be repetitive because if someone uh, uh, instead of choosing 40 different hadiths for example goes and finds uh, 40 hadiths but there are different versions of the same hadith. This is not enough. Why? Because the point is that if based on these hadith, you can improve 40 points in your life. 40 aspects of your character and behavior. 40 aspects of your personal and social relations then we can make sure that you are almost in the right conditions this is my understanding means if you bring 40 positive changes to the life of yourself and ummah then you have almost completed the development and therefore you can be resurrected as faqih alim because what is in the end of the day the purpose of ilm isn't it to know how you can improve and do it you know what make you and your society better and you do it you know it and you do it so this person is aware and is informing people and helping people in improving in 40 aspects they should benefit from this hadith so he would be resurrected as alim
I think I mentioned was uh, this in one of the lectures that in my humble opinion if a person in the process of doing something for the sake of Allah and making sufficient efforts he dies a hard working sincere student seeker of knowledge if he dies before he becomes Allah I think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would complete for him this process and he would be resurrected inshallah as alim why because this was his intention this was his uh, struggle and efforts but his life was not just enough inshallah this process will be complete so the same here this person who is committed to keeping and teaching and practicing 40 hadith about 40 different points that would benefit Ummah in their life he would be resurrected as an alim of course if someone can do this more he would be a greater alim because the differences between ranks among mu'mineen is based on their knowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would raise those of you who have faith and those who have been given knowledge Allah would raise them in ranks first based on Iman then after Iman based on different level of knowledge levels of knowledge among Mu'mineen as Allah says okay so Imam Khomeini because of this hadith and a practice which has been common among scholars Sunni Shia which is inspired by this hadith decided to choose 40 hadith and comment on them so that himself and other people can benefit from it and we know that actually these were first given as lessons on akhlaq to the Hose students and sometimes also maybe other people used to go and uh, attend in the holy city of Qom actually we know that it has been uh, taught this uh, series was taught in uh, Madrasa Faiziyya and Mullah Sadiq so in two uh, schools Imam Khomeini used to teach this and then he uh, himself uh, made it as a book and when he made it as a book it was in the year 1358 13 58 Hijri Qamari so it is 14, uh, 79 years ago because we are now 1439 he completed this in 1358 Hijri Qamari 79 years ago while still his teacher Ayatollah Shah Abadi was alive Imam Khomeini in Akhlaq and Irfan very much benefited from the late Ayatollah Shah Abadi and sometimes he refers in this book to his teacher Ayatollah Shah Abadi okay before I start with the first hadith I want to give you a little general introduction to the content of the book there are obviously 40 hadiths so the book is organized around 40 hadith out of these 40 hadith 34 hadith relate directly to akhlaq to ethics to morality and six of them relate to aqaid and ma'arif to beliefs and uh, doctrines of course those have also uh, 
indirectly moral impact and he brings important ideas there especially from mystical perspective so 34 are about akhlaq and these 34 are divided into different categories we can classify them in this way because akhlaq is a journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he tries to explain first what is human being and he very much here focuses on clarifying the concept of fitrah and he in this particular aspect very much uh, reflects on the teachings of his teacher Ayatollah Shah Abadi and Imam Khomeini in one place says that he was very special in analyzing and exploring the concept of fitra so he starts with explaining human being especially with particular reference to fitrah he talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as our end because we are to move towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but then about akhlaq when it comes to akhlaq he talks about what we should achieve and what we should avoid for example, he talks about tafakkur, contemplation, ikhlas, sincerity, shukr, gratitude, ibadat, worship, yaqeen, certainty, tawbah, repentance, sabr, patience, tawakkul, trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dhikr, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are the things that we have to equip ourselves with he also talks about the obstacles the problems that we have to avoid or if we suffer to remove about Riya showing up or self-admiration Kebra arrogance Hasad jealousy dunya, excessive love for dunya, nefaq, hypocrisy, following one's uh, lower desires, hawa, ghaybah, in this it means backbiting, riba, asabiya, biasness, shak, doubt, unnecessary doubt, vaswas, to be frequent you know frequently doubting and not being able to establish and making up your mind you don't establish any opinion so he would talk about both sides of akhla virtue and vices good practices bad practices and all with a good understanding of humanity and what humanity has to achieve he believes that all the prophets have come and Allah has also given us aql, intellect for tarbiyatun nafs so prophets and aql, two hujja of Allah are for self-development, self-education for self-formation tarbiyatun nafs so this is the aim then he says that we don't just need a book on akhlaq this is also very important he says a book on akhlaq 
can be in my wording his idea is this a book on akhlaq sometimes can be even not very reliable in theory not a well balanced and objective understanding of akhlaq akhlaq is not something that everyone can really deal with yes it is true that the basics the principles everyone by his fetra can understand but when it comes to details to priorities there are lots of technicalities here not every alim not every scholar who has written on akhlaq has come up with a balanced comprehensive understanding but even those who have come with good understanding Imam Khomeini says sometimes their books are like prescriptions they give you names of the medicines that you have to take they show you what's the treatment for your illness but he says this is not enough he says a good book on akhlaq should not just give us medicine's name give us a good prescription a good book on akhlaq should actually treat us in arabic and farsi we say mu'alaja treatment when you go to a doctor he should behave and interact with you in the way that your problem is solved your disease is over not just he gives you a, a piece of paper on which there are some names he should talk to you he should encourage you if there is something bad that you eat or you do he has to work with you mentally psychologically prepare you to take the medicine to avoid harmful things when it comes to akhlaq, if you go to a teacher of akhlaq, he shouldn't just give you theoretical lessons. He should practically help you. Now, Imam Khomeini says, a good book of akhlaq also should do the same. And here, he brings the concept of maw'idha to do va'ad maybe in English we can say preaching to give mawadha is not just to teach to give information who is va'id va'id whether it be a person or a book written by such person is the one that helps you in moral development helps you in overcoming your flaws and faults and deficiencies and impurities and illnesses therefore you see Imam Khomeini in this book uses a language which is not the language of just writing an academic book yes ideas are well established like academic book academic thesis everything is documented everything is argued for but he is not satisfied with this he didn't want to just write a book and add one more title to islamic library his aim was to write a book that would engage the reader and make a very intimate relation with the reader 
a book that in the absence of being in touch with a godly a scholar would be your godly guide and give you energy give you direction give you determination to become a better person so this is why he wrote this book and the language he uses is such language he talks to the reader he tries to engage with the readers and very much he tries to give you hope and determination in addition to giving you a knowledge that of course any scholarly book should give but he tries to help you in a personal way to become a more hopeful and more determined and more positive and more alert person so this is what i wanted to say about this book uh, i wanted to also uh, start with the first hadith but our time is already i think uh, coming to an end so maybe this can remain as an introduction and then inshallah we would start with the next hadith in the next week inshallah which is a beautiful hadith about jihad al nafs may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise and elevate the position of all our scholars especially imam khomeini and the people that in addition to giving us knowledge and direction they lived by their knowledge to the best capacity that they had and they opened for us a path that made it clearer for us what to do and gave us honor of being a faithful person in this day and age alhamdulillah rabbil alamin